I needed him, you know? So through that needing and like, oh my gosh, I'm getting, you know, divorced. Is this right? Not like this other person. And this is just so wrong. Like all of this is how it's happening is so wrong. The only person who I could turn to at that moment, you know, to ask, could I even get out of this slump that I was in was him. All right, so we're back for another story time. If you're new to our channel, I'm Elena, and this is my husband, Joe. And we've been doing a story time on how we met and how our relationship developed over, you know, the period of a couple years. So let's get to part, what, six of the story time. Last time we left off, um, I had that some, you know, not so great things happen to me. I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail um, for the sake of like our kids and stuff like that. So, but basically what ended up happening is I left, filed for a divorce shortly after and um, just kind of moved out, moved into my own place, my own apartment um, and was just trying to figure my own thing out now I guess um at the same time my ex was still kind of like trying to call me and trying to get me to come come back I guess or for us to work things out and you know I was considering it and which is really weird for me to say now like who would consider going back to someone after they like did uh, things to you that you know just aren't right so then after I, like me and you, we just, we, we spent even more time together, I would say, after after that happened. Um, I don't know, I think I was, I don't even remember, like my mind was so, my mind was so like crazy and just, not crazy, my mind was so sporadic during were, that time. I think you were scared. Um, I mean, just stepping out into just a completely different environment, like basically, um, breaking off a relationship a very long-term relationship basically everything you knew you were stepping out mm -hmm. into a completely different type of life well it wasn't that crazy because just the year before we weren't even together yeah but you were filing for a divorce it's like i was happy to be filing for a divorce but at the same time like you're super super sad. Like, you go, like when you get divorced you go through so many different stages like for me at first it was like woohoo yes you know mm -hmm. and then like you it sets in like why am I gonna see this person no matter what a person does to you if you love them you're like why am I gonna see that person I'm, I'm, I haven't been around them and then you cry because you miss them and it's like why do I miss this this person who has done all these bad things to me or has said all these bad things to me you know and then um you know so that's confusing in itself and then you go you just go through a lot of different emotions and I was still going through that while me and you were kind of talking to each other and trying to figure out where we stood. We weren't in a relationship, but you know, I obviously liked you. And um, even in the beginning of us talking. And yeah, also what I understood was that when you're having a divorce, you're, you're, you're not just taking away the bad things. You're not leaving the bad things. You're mm -hmm. leaving everything. Mm -hmm. You're stepping away from the good and the bad and just your history and what you know you know of yourself to be in that family you're mm -hmm. you're stepping away from everything mm -hmm. how did you feel during that time like seeing me like moving out and just that whole thing um uh, i felt two different things i felt like i felt proud that you were stepping out of that um environment mm -hmm. but at the same time i felt um I felt like I caused it mm -hmm. at the same time. And I don't know if I, I don't know exactly if, if I felt good about it or bad about it. Like in some ways I was like, you know what? Like this was eventually meant to happen. Like mm -hmm. this, like this is the result of everything, you know, the course of, you know, all these years um, being treated in different types of ways or whatever. But, um, you know, at the same time, like, I just wish I wasn't the person. Yeah. But it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that clear for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the same thing, like, I wish, too. Like, I just wish that we didn't start that, you know, start having this 
you know, basically relationship with each other mm-hmm. while I was married. I wish, like, it happened in another way. I wish, like, I came home and something happened and, you know, you hadn't put a part in it. Yeah, and I think I struggled with that. Like, after uh, me and my ex, like, we, we were separated and me and you were, like, talking. We didn't, like, start a relationship right away. We didn't do anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was a lot because of the fact that we even, you know. Okay, so basically at this time, I'm just trying to, like, I was just trying to figure out, okay, you know, I was happy actually. I, I was happy and I was sad at the same time. So that was like the problem. Like mm. those two mixture of emotions really had me like, you know, out of my own self. But you were there and um, we did build a better friendship. Um, I think you were scared and excited at the same time. That's the way I would put it. I would say that I was sad. I was happy and i was excited i was i mean i was sad about my end of my relationship i was maybe even depressed about it um but also i was curious and excited about what could possibly happen between me and you i even felt bad about that i'm like why am i thinking about like what could happen with us when i'm supposed to be like settling that that situation you know and we weren't even like completely we weren't like illegally divorced yes or anything like that and i'm still like thinking about you so it's just like a struggle and the more um i recognize that the more i recognize even like our sin you know so after a while after i had been separated from my husband and joe moved in with me and um it was a decision that i i didn't want you to move in with me but you were like i want to move in with you i was like more of it you know and it was supposed to just be for like a short amount of time. Um, and I had extra room, so I was like, okay, fine. And like, we talked to each other all the time anyway. I was like, okay, cool. You stay in that bedroom, whatever. I stay in this bedroom. And that's what we did. But that was horrible, obviously, because then we started like, because just no one would stay in one room yeah. <laughs> alone. Right. We knew like why I was separated from my husband. Like, he, well, how did you feel? Like, I felt whatever. I'm basically separated from him. We're basically, I know I'm getting divorced. I can have sex with whoever I want to type of mindset. Like my mind was really sporadic. And so like, I was like, an I don't give a crap mood for a little bit of time. For like, an I hour. was thinking that like, um, you know, like I was basically like, okay, well you're basically divorced type of thing. Um, you're not in a relationship. So I wasn't thinking about the legalities of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, what I was thinking was just, you know, um, we are together we're basically we're basically together and i wasn't um looking at the value of what marriage was Mm -hmm. so because i didn't understand marriage everything that holds true and holds valuable in marriage just kind of you know spread out throughout in dating in just everything you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's just all that stuff contained um it was just you know everywhere that's why there was sex outside of marriage there Mm -hmm. is just you know whatever whatever holds value in there Mm -hmm. we one day we decided after pulling and tugging with each other like okay we're gonna be in a relationship with each other yeah i'm not legally divorced yet but we decided that we wanted to be in a relationship with each other so we were gonna do it um when we started to date each other um, and while we were having sex with each other there was like a lot of guilt like for me less guilt because i was like kind of out of my mind and then like i was just like whatever i'm gonna do what i want to do i'm gonna have sex with who i want to have sex with you know i was like i got this i'm gonna do me i'm gonna do me that's what i was thinking i was like i don't really care i don't feel you would be like i feel just so guilty i'm like i don't feel guilty <laughs> yeah i felt guilty from the very very beginning because it's like she's married and then just seeing her going through the process of the divorce and even filing for divorce isn't being divorced and so like you know because there was the process of that the entire time that was kind of blanketing over us over our entire relationship Mm -hmm. up until the divorce and even still after Mm -hmm. um like sex before before the divorce it just it never felt right it never felt um like the right thing to do it just Mm -hmm. i felt like um i felt in the wrong every Mm -hmm. single time but yeah it still felt good only only when i was just 
not thinking about it like if i if i was drinking, drinking. or something like that yeah. or just you know i just wasn't in my might right might right right mindset yeah like did you not have did, the guilt? Yeah, did I not yeah. have the guilt? And that's why I said, like, I didn't have a lot of guilt. And that's right why you were then. always taking me out to different places. And yeah, stuff. I was like, Joe, I only like you when you drink and stuff yeah. like that. But also, like, um, that's why I didn't really feel guilty about it then because I wasn't in, I wasn't in my same mind. Just everything that I was going to, going through at that moment, which is putting me in a different, whole nother mindset. I don't even know how to explain it. I didn't, I didn't even think that I could be like that but that's how I was you know and I think like the more time we spent together the more guilty I saw you feeling I even tried to like kind of like take that away like no you shouldn't feel that way you know like I wanted to like kind of hide that or push that feeling under you know but I think that um, when we used to take the kids to like Awanas um, and we would turn on, we have a radio station in our our um, area and they play like, um, you know, sermons in the evening time. And we would just hear these sermons and then these sermons had to either do with sex or having sex outside of marriage or they had to do with divorce, things like that. And like the more and more we spent time together, like just situations would happen where, you know, we would hear these sermons or a Bible verse or whatever it may be going to that just had so much to do with the situation we were in. A lot of people constantly ask us, when did we become a Christian? So for me, I was saved when I was probably eight, nine years old in church. I remember the day I was saved. I remember rape, the pastor saying like, if you want that salvation, you know, raise your hand. I rose my hand. I knew I wanted it. I went into the room, I prayed the prayer of salvation, and I was saved. Um, we went to a Christian um, ter uh, school, and so, like, you can rededicate your life to Christ, you know, you can do all those things, I've done that before. I, I, and I, was sh I knew I was saved. After college, I kind of doubted whether or not I was saved a lot or a little bit, but then I was like, okay, I'm saved. But I didn't have all the way up until when I was married with my ex. I never had like a true relationship with Christ, like a one-on-one, -on -one, that relationship that people I've heard about in church and I've heard about people saying, and I just, I was they were like, do you want a true relationship with God? I'm like, I guess I got, I guess I got it, you know? And I'm saved, I guess I got it. But I don't think I found out until me and you were before a little bit before me and you were married and after we were married like what a true relationship with christ is so i think it was before we got married during the time joe and i were kind of researching a lot of things about marriage and we were just going to bible classes together i started to really understand it and when we were praying together and seeing god so alive in our lives because of all the messages we were getting from different places, that's when I really started to develop a relationship with Christ and a trust relationship with him and a listening relationship. Yeah, I mean, kind of like when they describe God as the living God or even the living Bible, like I never quite understood it, like why they used it, why, why they referred these things as living, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I didn't understand that because it's like, like the Bible, it's, it's history. You know, we're just learning from it type mm -hmm. of thing. But for the Bible to speak to, for you to read into the Bible and then for it to reflect directly into your present life, mm -hmm. um, that's something that I haven't experienced in like, like in a really long time. Mm -hmm. And how, how much we were experiencing it was yeah. to me amazing. Like mm -hmm. one week, every single day, we could do something different and go to a different church or go to a different, um, yeah you know, class, and it would be all about the same exact thing, the same Bible verses, the same stories that really just went weight on my heart that, hey, when I'm praying, God is listening to me. He's trying to answer me. He, he wants to answer the questions that we have, and he answered them through that. That's when I really felt like there's a God. I could really see a real God and, you know, a real relationship with Christ and also because of the tugging on our hearts 
the realness of like how real the Holy Spirit Spirit really is. Yeah, I was saved. Um, well, I'll put it this way: I was um, I was raised up in the church, like since I could even remember. I remember like crying and running out of the room, like in the um, you know the nurse in the nursery. So I was I must have been like three years old or something mm -hmm. like that. I remember like running out, just running all around, you know, dodging all the teachers, like finding my mom. And then, um, you know, so I just kind of grew up in the church. So I, I guess I, I became a little bit um, numb from the messages, I guess. But uh, I remember around, I would say around 12 years old, I think I was actually saved. I actually recognized and understood what salvation was. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I put all these things together in my mind. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what, this is what god is this is what jesus did this is what the holy spirit does and um and uh basically from that i believe that i was you know i i received salvation but i don't believe that i actually built a sturdy foundation of like um with my faith i do believe that i had faith throughout you know just you know through middle school high school yeah. whatever but it, it never it never was strong enough to actually build a relationship to get to another place mm -hmm. in like awareness and consciousness and influence um and i don't believe god um gave that you know he released that to me until like i matured and um you know ultimately you know until me and elena we you know went through our crisis yeah um so that he finally like broke down what we thought we knew and then he finally was like, okay, you know, now I paved the ground. Now I can do mm -hmm. something. Now yeah. I can build. For me, like also, like what, exactly what you're saying, like it was the, it was the sin that mm. I committed that really shook me and like, you're not this holy person, you know, you're not this complete holy person by yourself all by yourself because i was living my life you know without god perfectly fine i was married you know i wasn't really doing a lot of like of the sinful acts you know i was whatever you want to call it you know i was you know i was i was living the right way but it wasn't necessarily with the help of god and when you came in and we and we did that and it was sinful it showed immediately that i was not calling on God I was not using him in my life at all because one thing came in and shook me you know and through that I was able to need God I needed him you know so through that needing and like oh my gosh I'm getting you know divorced is this right not like this other person and this is just so wrong like all of this is how it's happening is so wrong the only person who I could turn to at that moment you know to ask, could I even get out of this slump that I was in, was him, you know? Yeah, I think also one of the most profound things that I realized is that when, I guess, when certain things happen, like certain crises, certain things happen, if you, um, if you seek God and you actually put your faith in what, in, in his direction, then you actually make progress, mm -hmm. you know, like he takes you to a, 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 a higher place mm -hmm. another place mm -hmm. you know but if you start relying on yourself and you make your own decisions based on what you think is right then you stay in the same cycle you know mm -hmm. what I mean mm -hmm. so I think never that ending, so that's a never ending cycle yeah yeah it, like you might have thought you figured it out for that time but mm -hmm. like just the, the the problems just keep on happening yeah. like problems just happen one after another after another after and that's another. what i and, thought that's what yeah. i thought i definitely thought like yeah i figured it out this is it and yeah. then bam problem again and, uh, yeah. and the past relationship or a bam yeah because you, know? you collapse every single time yeah and you don't actually get stronger you don't strengthen mm -hmm. yourself and your relationship your faith doesn't get stronger and more extreme mm -hmm. to where you can trust god in in more mm -hmm. difficult circumstances you know when we were like looking at the bible and and looking at the different stories in the Bible, just kind of like out of context and just in reference to uh, like um, these different people in the Bible, we we weren't necessarily reading it 
for um, for our own selves, we were reading it like a storybook. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We weren't actually um, looking into it. We weren't. I don't believe that we were actually seeking the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We were just looking at the stories and like, okay, so this person did this in this situation, so that's the answer. Mm -hmm. So that's thing. right. So what I was saying is that I was struggling a lot with the sin that we were doing and you know, thinking in my mind that God's not going to be okay with this. This is, relationship is never going to work. I hate him, and so why don't I just go and worship the devil? The devil won't let me have this. The devil doesn't won't make me feel guilty. That's what I was thinking to myself. Then everything will be fine. Um... And things just aren't that black and white when it comes to God, I believe. I mean, now that I see that, back in the day, I thought, sinner, horrible, there's no redemption for me. There's no, I mean, there's no, there's no better outcome. There's no better life for me and my kids. It's just how it's going to be. I'm just going to be alone and by myself or something like that. And, and or I'm just going to go back to this, this guy. And I, I hated the thought of that. And so I hated God because of that. All right, so next story time be about how we got married we, and um, the whole marriage situation thing that happened. Is there a whole marriage situation? That? Yeah, there's more because there's this stuff that happened. But yeah, okay, so um, we have to do that. Joe, stop yawning.